Hi, right, Chris here, and welcome to my review of the Ricoh Magic MK36. It's a, a mini PC, another one of those Atoms. It's got the very common now Atom X5Z 8300 in it. It's got a 32 gigabyte eMMC, 2 gigabytes of RAM. One of the interesting features that it does have is dual band wireless, which is good to see. So it supports the 5 gigahertz band. And we also have a LAN port on it and a USB 3. It's running Windows 10. Now I got this from GearBest.com. I've already pre-opened the package. So they've thrown it in a DHL bag for me. And it does come wrapped up in this bubble wrap. So just get it out of the bag. So there's the box, it's still got the actual plastic wrap on it which is good to see that no one else has actually opened this. And there's a few of those specs there that I just outlined. Unfortunately it's only a 100 megabit per second uh, RJ45 Ethernet which is a shame. So I'll just get this open and we'll have a look at it. So here we go, it's a plasticky kind of build, it's all wrapped up. But the base of it is metal which is good to see, there's a lot of holes along here for ventilation and it looks like right here is probably where the core of that atom is so that whole back plate is going to become a big passive heatsink for it. Hopefully the temperatures are going to be good but I will be checking that out shortly once I get this powered up, run through a few benchmarks and look at the temperatures. So we have nothing there on the back, sorry that's the front. So nothing on the front, on the, what I think, there. okay that's the front. So on the right hand side we have power on, USB 3 port, USB 2 port, 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the back here we have another two USB 2 ports micro SD card slot there's a Kensington lock which is interesting and there's the full size HDMI and our RJ45 Ethernet as well as our 12 volt DC in and nothing else on the top is just the logo this is plastic with a bit of a texture pattern on the top of it so have a look and see what the specs are of the Power adapter is a EU one which is good for me because I'm in Spain and it is 12 volts, 2 amps and they have included a USB, sorry, HDMI cable there and a few short instructions here on just operating Windows 10 by the looks of it although that's Windows 8.1 it's supposed to have Windows 10 on there so I'll get the thing powered up now and I'll walk you through a few benchmarks and a little bit of gaming and just see how it performs and most importantly how the thermals are. So I powered up the tablet I have installed a few benchmarks already and I'll run through some of the scores so when I first turned it on at least Windows started up the initial install process I had the choice between five languages so we had German, Italian, French, Spanish and English which was good to see we don't have to download any language packs there and I'll show you the C drive at the moment I have under 12 gigabytes free but on the first boot I did have 19.2 gigabytes which isn't a lot this is only a 32 gigabyte eMMC and here's the external one terabyte drive that I plugged in that works just fine from the USB 3 port or any one of those uh, USB 2 ports. Works fine, no problems there. I will show you our system and the device manager. Uh, by the way, I have set the scaling to 150% for the purposes of this video, just so you can see things a little bit clearer. So the, the disk drive is a Samsung MBG 4GC, and I will show you the speeds of those. Here are the benchmark results using Crystal Disk Mark 5.03. Not bad at all. The 4K random read and write speeds are reasonably good for this type of 
flash storage. I have seen as low as 12, sorry, 2 on the BWIN and 4C brands. Those are extremely slow. But these speeds here are reasonably good. I'm very happy with that. I'll be happy with the fact that they have used a proper brand drive in there, which is good. And then we have the micro SD card slot. It can get speeds of probably up to 100 megabytes per second if your card's going to support it. So high speed, not limited to 24 megabytes per second like the Bay Trails. And this is the USB 3.0 port testing out my SanDisk Extreme USB 3.0 pen drive. Very good speeds. And back to the device manager, just quickly show you the wireless card. It's actually an Intel unit, which is odd. I have never seen an Intel used in these particular mini PCs, which is really good to see it coming in now. And the fact that that dual band, finally dual band, so we can use the 5 gigahertz band. Normally we see Realtek or Broadcom. And there's the USB Ethernet adapter. And Windows 10, fully activated, Windows 10 Home. Now I'll just quickly show you the benchmarks I ran. Geekbench 3, a good score considering the chipset. Same too for the iStore 1.2 score, that is quite good, 16,000. I haven't seen from the Atom X5Z 8300. Not on a tablet at least. Probably due to the fact that this mini PC has a lot more thermal headroom or has less power limiting than a tablet. And the 3D Mark 11 score, almost about 100 points higher than the tablets I've tested with this particular chipset, like the Chewy HR10. Uh, that score, of course, is incredibly low if you're running any games or anything like that. That score is extremely low. My desktop PC gets about 11,000. Uh, actually, no, a lot more than that. I'm thinking of the Firestorm score gets 11,000, but this is very low. I wouldn't even bother running Firestorm on this kind of hardware because it's just not going to be able to run it any more than a slideshow. So I'll get on now and test out a few games and see how those run. Sorry, before I test out any games, I just wanted to show you the wireless. So normally from my desktop, I can get 50 megabits per second download and around 25 upload. Here I got 46 and 27 upload. So that's quite good. Now this is the wireless. When it comes to the Ethernet port, the result was a little less, or actually quite a lot less on the download with 32 megabits per second. Not too sure the reason. It could have been traffic at the time because I am actually connected up through uh, 4G network so it depends of course on the load on that 4G network at the time but I did the test literally within minutes you can see that's 8.58 p.m. and this test was done I think just a few minutes after that so, so really there shouldn't really be much of a difference there see that was done at 9 so two minutes later I did that test the same server as well, Amansa. So you can see there the difference between them. Not sure why, but it seems that the wireless card is faster than that USB 2 Ethernet card they have installed. Now my first game I'm going to test is League of Legends. A game against two other bots and one bot on my own team. My heart All the sword. world on one arrow. So the default settings it used was uh, 1280 by 800 and at the moment on very low and it's running at uh, 50 frames per second there. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. So that frame rate is perfectly fine. I'm just going to change it to 1080p. We should be able to at least run this game in 1080p on the very low setting. So 1080p around 40 I frames per second. 
You'll see once all the minions spawn, it should still have minions playable spawn. frame rates. Do not confuse mercy for weakness. My aim is steady. I won't lead us astray. We are stronger. So League of Legends is definitely playable. Uh, frame rates are averaging around 40, 30 frames per second, 1080p lowest. On to Counter Strike Global Offensive now. So I'm going to run everything on the lowest settings. Very low, 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 low. And 800 times 600 resolution, 4x3 ratio, that's why it's uh, in this little box here at the moment. So we see how that runs. I'm going to play a bit of Dust 2 map. Okay, so it's finally loading in. I'll just warn you that I'm horrible at this game, so be prepared to see some of the worst gameplay you've probably ever seen. Also, Bush. Counter <laughs> Play. So there's a few people on the server I think we got uh, 30 I think it was. So do close to it. Blood. Perfect. Oh, j'ai juste vu ses pieds, quoi. The frame rate is not really ideal. I mean, it dipped down to about 14 frames per second. We're hovering at the moment around 30. But yeah, this is just really too low, I think, to play this kind of game. And the last game I'm going to test in this video is Asphalt 8 Airborne. Now, I have lowered the settings. It's in 1080p, but I've lowered the settings down because the game auto sets the effects to extreme which I think is far too demanding for this Atom X5. So I'll set that to medium now and we'll see how that runs. I'm going to turn the music right down and off because uh, YouTube will give me copyright issues with some of the music tracks that played in this game. So we'll see how it runs.
Okay, so that one's very playable. You can see it um, easy enough for me to come in first place there with the frame rates that were coming out of that. So let's have a look now at the temperatures of all those gaming tests that I did run and have a look and see how it's handled that. So I've got HW Info has been running here in the background. So we've got up to 85 degrees. That's pretty much the same as every other X5 Z8300 out there. They all get hot up to this. According to this, no thermal throttling, but the TJ Maxx, we're only 5 degrees off from hitting that. So not really that good, the temperatures. So if you're going to be gaming for long times, I imagine it could get a little bit hotter, maybe a few more degrees. Okay, so before I wrap up this video, just have a look now at the performance of playing a 4K video, if it's capable of doing that or not. Now just jump into YouTube. And have a look at a 4K clip. When it comes to copyrights. I'll have to turn the volume down on this one, just in case. So it set the quality now to 2160p. Give it a bit of time to cache that video. And we'll have a look at the stats for nerds. Alright, so, no drop frames, seems to be keeping up with it, that is really good. Probably only my internet connection, I think, is the problem here at the moment. But, it's handling that fine, If so if you do have a 4K TV, it does output at least 30 hertz. these Cherry Trails, so you can run a 30 frames per second video clip without any problems. This of course is in Edge. If you try the same thing in Chrome, it's probably not going to work at all. Chrome doesn't run the 4K videos. Doesn't stream them very well, so something to think about. Okay, so overall the unit I think is quite good. This is the, the MK36S. I don't think it's too bad. Those thermals are probably the only troubling part of the whole entire system. It runs my one terabyte hard drive. The performance is as expected for an, a low-end Cherry Trail. This is a quad-core Z8300. You can't really expect too much. But overall, I think it's not too bad for the price. You have to remember this is only a $100 unit, so you can use it as a media player. You can plug in your hard drives. You could use it to stream Netflix from the App Store. You can do some light gaming on it. Nothing too serious. And if those are what your needs are, then maybe this system to look at. Thanks for watching the review and hopefully see you in the channel with more up-and-coming reviews of tablets and mini PCs. Bye for now.